One of the most important and most stressful parts of any Mars rover mission is the landing phase, which is commonly referred to as the seven minutes of terror. Hola, my name is Dr. Desiree Whitmore, and I'm a physicist here at the Exploratorium. Where does the name seven minutes of terror come from? Well, seven minutes refers to the time that it takes for the Mars rover to enter into the atmosphere, descend, and land on the Martian surface. This is called the Entry, Descent, and Landing, or EDL phase of the mission. Because the Earth is so far away from Mars during the landing of the rover, it takes 11 whole minutes for any signal to reach the Earth from Mars. This means that we will not know for sure if the rover has touched down until 11 minutes after it has happened. So what goes on during these seven minutes that could possibly have NASA engineers so worried? Well, first of all, the spacecraft has to slow down all the way from 12,500 miles per hour all the way down to zero miles per hour in a height of only 80 miles. Second, the rover has to land inside of a crater that is full of obstacles like cliffs and rocky terrain, all without a driver. Luckily, NASA has landed previous rovers on the Red Planet and has learned a lot each time and has continued to make improvements. The spacecraft itself is made up of five main parts. At the top is the cruise stage, which carries the fuel tanks, the solar cells, and other tools necessary to travel to Mars. Below that is the back shell, which contains the parachute. Beneath the back shell is the descent stage, which will help the rover with its final landing. And then you have the Perseverance rover itself. And on the bottom, you have the heat shield, which protects the rover during entry. Around 10 minutes, Prior to entering the Martian atmosphere, the craft separates from the cruise stage and leaves it behind. It's done its job to get the craft to Mars, and now it is just extra weight. The aero shell, which is made of the heat shield and the back shell, spends the next 10 minutes positioning itself just right for maximum slowdown upon entry. The best position for entry is to have the heat shield in just the right angle so that the most molecules from the atmosphere will hit it as it travels. These molecules will push up against the heat shields, which introduces a drag force and helps to slow it down a lot. It starts at a speed of 12,500 miles per hour, and the drag force will slow it down all the way to 1,000 miles per hour, which takes about four whole minutes. Now, all of these molecules pushing against the heat shield also creates friction against it, which causes it to heat up a lot. The heat shield reaches a temperature as high as 1300 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt iron. But the rover, which is inside of the shell, only gets up to about 25 degrees Celsius, which is about room temperature here on Earth. Because the atmosphere on Mars is so much thinner than the atmosphere on Earth, there's not enough drag force exerted on the shell to slow it down to land. We need something that is able to introduce much more drag force. Once the shell slows down to around 1,000 miles per hour, which is about 1.7 times the speed of sound, or Mach 1.7, the aero shell can deploy its parachute. This is the largest parachute ever made at 70 feet in diameter. This is the first mission where the timing of deploying the parachute is left completely up to the rover based on its position relative to its target. It has a new technology called range trigger. This will give the rover a much smaller area to land in free of obstacles and will help to reduce the chance that it will overshoot or undershoot its target, cutting down its time to commute to work site by as much as a year of precious mission time. 20 seconds after the parachute is opened, the heat shield is dropped, which allows the rover to start taking data using its radar and camera systems. The brand new Terrain Relative Navigation takes photos of the surface of Mars as it is traveling, and it compares them to maps that are already on board its computer to better understand where it is and to make course corrections. The jetpack and the Terrain Relative Navigation work together to get the rover to its target location, making sure to avoid any obstacles that could be in the way of descent. When the descent stage has reached an altitude of 65 feet, it is now time for the sky crane maneuver. The jetpack can't get too close to the ground 
because it will kick up a huge dust cloud, which could ruin the rover and all of its instrumentation. So instead, it lowers the rover down on a 20 foot rope to the ground. As soon as the rover begins lowering, it uncurls and locks its wheels in place for landing. Once the wheels are firmly on the ground, the cables are cut and the jetpack flies away as far as it possibly can to protect the rover and it crashes into the Martian surface once it runs out of fuel. All of this will happen in just under seven minutes and we on Earth will be waiting for an additional four minutes after landing to hear back that the rover has even entered the atmosphere so that we can learn about the fate of the rover and whether or not its landing was successful. Stay tuned to learn more about the Perseverance mission and its findings on exploratorium.edu slash Mars.